I'm Cassie Wish, and this is my co-host Vanessa Schreckengast, and we welcome you to Pruder School District's Living History. We attend Olander Elementary and are today's host for visit with um, Lillian Lair, mm -hmm. Isabel Knopp, and Evelyn Trapp. Um, we will begin by asking each of you to tell us a bit about yourselves and what you are currently doing. If you just want to start, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead, Liam. Go ahead. Yeah, you can go ahead. Would oh, you like to go you want me first? Yeah, well, sure. Um, I, I just uh, used to play golf a lot, and um, I used to work for a dentist, Dr. Alexander. I was in the office for 10 years, and then when I retired, I stayed home, and we have one daughter, and she lives here in Fort Collins. And uh, I always like to play golf, and we we get out in the morning. Our husband, and I, my husband, and I, and we walk about two miles every morning. Wow! And try mm -hmm. to keep in shape. <laughs> yeah, that's good. <laughs> and um, we we love Fort Collins. We've lived here all our lives. We moved away three different times, and always came back. And I just can't imagine living anywhere but Fort Collins. <laughs> and we were so pleased when the school was named after our father because we thought it was quite an honor, and it really uh, meant a lot to the whole family. So we liked it. We like it here very much. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then the other Putnam sister, which is Isabel, mm -hmm. whose father was named for a school, would you mm -hmm. like to tell us about something yeah. or things you do well, now? Well, the, the one thing that we thought was just great was the fact that the school was named and Dad was still living and attended the dedication. In so many instances, honors are bestowed after people die, but we have been able to enjoy the Putnam School, the name, the things that happened here from the time it was built and dedicated. And that has been, I think, one of the pluses and I have, in 1956, when they originally dedicated the school, mother and dad also celebrated their golden wedding anniversary. Wow. So that was quite an outstanding year for the Putnam yeah. family. Yeah, it must have been. Okay, then we also have Evelyn Trout, who worked with Mr. Putnam mm -hmm. yes. at, what was it, Worthington? No, Bellingham? it was at uh, Remington. Remington. Mm -hmm. At the Remington <laughs> School, yes. Mr. Putnam was a custodian there, mm -hmm. and I was a first grade teacher, and I taught in the room that was right above his living quarters. Oh. They lived <laughs> down at, in the basement. Mm -hmm. It was a very interesting school. Mm -hmm. And he was more than a custodian. He was a friend. He was part of the faculty. Quite in fact, one thing, one day I was out on duty and the sixth grade boys were a lot bigger than I was, <laughs> and they got in a fight. <laughs> and I tried to talk, but they wouldn't quit. And he had been watching out of a window and he came out and he said, you go in, I'll take care of that. That was the kind of person he was. Okay. Um, I understand that your father is the only custodian that has ever had a school named after him. Um, how did you feel when he was given this honor? It's a little hard to express how you feel when somebody gets an honor like that. <laughs> but it, it, that's one, definitely one of the highlights in our life. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was really, uh, of course, we felt that, that Dad deserved it. Mm -hmm. But it was really, as far as we were concerned, an outstanding tribute to the type of a person he was all of his life. I always remember Mother called me at my office, and she said, you'll never guess what. They called and said they're going to name the new school after your dad. And she was so excited, and I just quit work right then and ran home. <laughs> <laughs> I was so happy for her because, like Isabel said, they named it for him while he was still living, and they could enjoy that. Yes. And it meant a lot to the whole family. Oh, I'm sure your dad was mm -hmm. just overjoyed. Yeah. yeah. Why do you think he was chosen for this honor? Well, because of the years that he spent with the school, and he understood kids. Sometimes I used to think, how do those kids stand him? Because he was rough <laughs> on them. But he, he insisted on discipline, and they all admired him. And he really did. He, he really insisted that the kids behave. 
And I think they liked that. And he was, he was just a part of them. He used to have more fun with those kids. I don't think he was, I don't think that they, they were, were afraid of him. But they knew when he said, don't do it, that they better not do it. That's good. So they knew their ground with they him. Did. Right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's good. So he had a lot of respect, I take it, then. Did. Yes. And he was great. Mm -hmm. um, do you visit the school that was named for your father at all? Uh, occasionally. And we had a granddaughter that went to school there. Oh, that's cool. And uh, I asked her one day, I said, did you ever tell any of the teachers that that was your granddad's school? And, and his picture hangs in the office, and she said, no, because nobody had believed me. <laughs> <laughs> Could you trace your father's history in the Poudre, Poudre School District, Liz? Do you want to do that? Do trace the, his history in the school district? Can I'll, you tell? I'll try. Uh -huh. I have no and notes, started. Uh -huh. but I think I can stumble through it. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. uh, he started with the district in 1916 and uh, uh, at Remington School. And at that time, uh, uh, we lived in the apartment, which was part of the school. And then, in, when they built the Putnam School, which it was named after Dad, they offered him the school, and he said no. He appreciated the offer, but he preferred to finish his working years at Remington, where he had started. So he never did actively work at the Putnam School. But he also did a lot of training of the custodians from other schools in the district. He was, he was a very gentle man, a very quiet man, very forceful man, and a perfectionist. That's great. The school looked like that, too. Yes. It was as clean. Those floors just showed. That's they right. They had wooden floors, they and they were beautiful. Oh, that's good. So he seemed to have more than just one job, because he was also training other custodians. Uh -huh. And he, he just seems like one of those people that just really stood out to children, it sounds like. He'll help anybody at any time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's, that's very good. Mm -hmm. um, how were children in schools different in the time that your father was working in the district? Like clothing, music? Well, we, girls never wore slacks. You always wore a dress. It, we didn't start wearing slacks for quite, quite a few years after that. But um, I, thi I think the schools maybe are pretty much like they are today. The, the, don't you think the, the schools in the past, I don't know about the discipline, because I, I don't know about that. But I think that they're pretty much the same. Mm -hmm. And the kids are all nice. They're all great <laughs> to be around. It helps to be around young people. Yeah. Do you have any other memories of him? Yes, when, since I was always taught above his living quarters, one day the children didn't go out to play. It was a cold day. So I always did some fun things, exercises. Well, this day we were doing jumping jacks. <laughs> and many times he came to my door and he'd stand in the door and kind of grin and smile and watch the children. That day he came over and he said, you know, the ceiling's going to come down in our living room. <laughs> that was the end of our jumping jacks. <laughs> And I might also add, the teachers had taught at Remington since Mr. Putnam had a school named for him, and my sister and I did. Uh, there were seven people that taught at Remington School who have had uh, schools named for him. Miss O'Day, who was a principal. That's right. Anna Tavelli, who taught f uh, fifth grade. Mm -hmm. um, Merle Bennett. Mer Merle Bennett, that taught kindergarten. Um, my sister, Lena, who taught fourth grade, and then mm -hmm. I came along and taught first grade. Isn't that And sweet? Mr. Putnam, who was wow. a custodian. Wow. So seven of us have had that That's honor. a lot. Wow. Wow. Well, that's a lot for That's quite a record, isn't From it? one yeah. school. Yeah. Right. It must that's be a really remarkable really school. Record. It, mm -hmm. was a remarkable yeah. school. Yeah. it was a remarkable school. Yeah. It was a fun school to be in. Yeah, I guess it was. <laughs> it was. I guess it was. So mm -hmm. did um, you guys go to 
Remington? Mm -hmm. I started in a kindergarten. I went two years because <laughs> I was so young when I started. And Merle Bennett said, you can go two years if you want to. So I went two years to kindergarten and then went clear through the eighth grade. They had uh, eighth grades, eight grades in school then. Okay, and then did you and, also go and to? You went, I went, uh, mm -hmm. I started in third grade. When we moved to the school, I was in third grade, and I went through to the eighth, and then went to ninth grade over in Lincoln, Lincoln what's now Lincoln Center. Mm -hmm. oh. That was the junior high. <laughs> yeah, I've been there a lot. What are your memories of Fort Collins back then? Gee, I can remember when the streets were paved. Mountain Avenue, I remember when they paved Mountain Avenue. We kids loved to roller skate. We waited until they took the barricades down and we skated clear out to the cemetery and back. <laughs> 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 that was, uh, but see, we had a lot of dirt streets and a lot of gravel mm -hmm. streets and then pretty soon they got paved streets. So we remember all those. We've seen a lot of changes. Yeah. Um, when you get as old as we are, you sure do. <laughs> <laughs> Um, how are you guys spending your time now? You go ahead. Okay, well, uh, uh, as naturally, we're both retired. We're not real sure if anybody would be interested in hiring us or not. <laughs> but uh, we're both retired, and you will find, if you are fortunate enough, enough to live long enough, that retirement is not so bad nature just slows you down. So it takes you twice as long to do ever anything that you did in a reasonable length of time. That's true. And uh, I, uh, Lillian and her husband have their own home, and I live at Parkwood Estates. And we play cards, and we have various groups that come in and put on programs for us, and and uh, well, you just do, we have a activity director and we are given the choice if they have some program, we want to see it, we go. If we don't want to see it, we stay in our apartment. And it's not a very nice place to live. So no one should dread, not in this day and age, old age, as much as you would have to earlier because there were no facilities for old people. And what do you do with your days? I know I'm retired, but I seem to keep very, you keep very busy. busy. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know how I ever worked. <laughs> Isn't that the That's truth? what everybody says. That's what you think, how did you work time in? Okay. Uh -huh. Um, what was it like living in the Remington School? Was it always like loud and noisy or? No, was it calm? we didn't hear any noise from the above. And it was sure nice on a snowy, cold day to go inside and up the steps and go to your class. <laughs> you didn't have to go outdoors. Uh, but it was, it, we had nice, comfortable living quarters. And, uh, but we had to do what every other student did. Mm -hmm. The fact that we lived in the school didn't give us any special privileges. Yeah. It wouldn't have been easier though, like if you forgot your homework or your lunch or something, you could just go right downstairs yeah. and get it. <laughs> <laughs> if you get permission. Yes. <laughs> I think that would make yeah, it yeah, easier. Yeah, you get permission. <laughs> Are there any other memories of your father that you would like to share? Mm, any other memory? Well, he was just a very, very kind, gentle man. And he, he uh, loved to fish and uh, he used to tie rods tied fishing rods for people. And he always was busy doing something, always. And he was a beautiful ice skater. <laughs> <laughs> My, see, mother and, mother and dad both came from Canada and uh, came from Ontario, Ontario province to Fort Collins. And dad was a beautiful ice skater and just loved to skate. Mm -hmm. And they used to, he joined the mountain club and they used to skate up on the Poudre River, which they don't do anymore because there's never enough water in the oh, river in, in winter for them to skate. 
but uh, he was just a perfectly mm -hmm. happy man when he either was out fishing or out skating or doing some outdoor activity. Mm -hmm. um, do you think he would have enjoyed like the avalanche, the hockey players, or? Uh, I feel that he would. Probably. Mm -hmm. Like a sport he'd get into. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. I think so. Uh -huh. well, that's special. That's really yes. nice. <laughs> Your stories are quite inspiring. <laughs> Thank very you. Very nice. We, we both just love to watch sports on TV. Mm -hmm. I'm a football freak. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what's your favorite? Oh, I love football and golf. Yeah, and golf. And yours? What about yours? I like football. You like football. <laughs> Good. See, we're, we're all football fans. We're football right. fans. We're so football did you guys like get together and golf any? Or I gave up golf last year because I couldn't see the ball anymore, uh -huh. and I golfed for years and I loved it, but I had to quit if I just couldn't. Do see you it. watch golf on TV? Now? Oh yeah. yeah, we watch every sport on TV except basketball. I can't get interested in that. <laughs> <laughs> What about you, Evelyn? Is there any sport that you used to do that you don't now? Or no. 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 I don't think I want to start skiing. Uh, no. okay. <laughs> <laughs> Not now, would we? Oh, no. no. <laughs> and it was a bit uh, of a time when I was able to ski. Yeah. It was fun. Okay. Do you have any memorabilia that you would like to show? I or? brought a picture of the old Remington School okay. and a picture of my dad. And I, we gave it to somebody, so they have that. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah, they'll be taking pictures of it, and they'll put mm -hmm. it on the show. Mm -hmm. well, I guess then we'll just wrap up. Yeah. Um, we thank you Thanks. for coming. We enjoyed your stories we enjoyed a lot. <laughs> well, thank you for very, inviting us. Oh, this has been course. very nice. Thank you. Yes, Thanks. thank you. And it's thank been you. good to see Lena because we haven't seen her for a long time. Yes. Isn't that the truth? I think it was just great mm -hmm. that you. I feel rather honored to, uh, to be asked to come sure. out here and meet with you young people. Well, thank I you. I feel honored to be part of the Putnam. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, that's nice. Yes, it and is. And thank you, girls. Yes, we thank you. That's great. Today's guest is Beulah Kinnincut, and she's here to tell us about her relationship with the Warners. Um, we'll begin by asking. Miss Kinnicott, um, just tell us a bit about what you're doing now and maybe how you met the Warners. Well, I'm retired now, and I have <coughs> certainly re enjoyed the retirement. I met the Warners in 1953. Mrs. Warner and I started teaching at the Laporte Avenue School, which is now the Fulana School. And um, I taught for kindergarten, she taught first grade. We were right across the hall from each other, and we did many things together. And <clears throat> we have just been very, very good friends at the whole time <clears throat> that she was alive. I knew her for 29 years, and I have kept in touch with the family. In fact, we were so close that the grandchildren children even call me Aunt Pula. And we are in touch yet to this day. Wow. And Mr. Werner is in the Good Samaritan home now. And uh, he will be 91 on Sunday. Wow. We have traveled a lot together and uh, had many, many wonderful times together. Okay. Um, how did you feel when the school was named after your friend? Oh, the Warners and I were very elated. Uh, Gail was a master teacher, and her ability to communicate with uh, both children and teachers and her friendly attitude were outstanding assets to her. Uh, she could criticize without censure, and she could share her experiences without credit. She always was welcome in every classroom, and uh, even all of the schools were very happy to see Gail come. 
Um, do you think that is why she was chosen to have a school named after her? Yes, I really do think so. Because she, not only was she a teacher, she was an administrator. She was a principal. And uh, then she was uh, a director of elementary education. So she had many hats, you might say, that she wore. <laughs> and uh, <coughs> she was also uh, interested in uh, community affairs, too. Mm -hmm. And she belonged to several groups, received many honors. That's and cool. even after uh, she retired, she was with the uh, uh, volunteered with the Good Samaritan out there. And uh, so she, I feel that she was very deserving of the honor of having the school named for her. Do you visit the school that was named after your friend? Uh, f at the beginning, Mr. Warner was able to go uh, for different things. But uh, since he had his heart attack and stroke, we haven't been. But he still is involved, you might say. <coughs> the uh, uh, choir, Warner Choir, comes out to sing at the home. Oh, that's nice. At least once a year, sometimes twice. And he gives them a, a nice uh, gift when they come out. He has sweet. done that every year since the school opened. Nice. Um, can you trace your friend's um, teaching history and educational background? Yes, I'd be glad to. Uh, <coughs> Gail was born in uh, Fort Lupton, and she went to school through the eighth grade there. Her folks moved to Wellington, so she graduated from Wellington High School. She attended Greeley Normal School for two years, and then she taught one year at a mining camp in Walsenburg. That was her first year of teaching. She then went to Sawatch, Colorado, and she was there for five years. Then she met Mr. Warner, and they were married. And at that time, they would not let married women teach. So in 1942, they moved to Fort Collins, and they lived on Horsetooth Road, right off of Shields and Horsetooth. <coughs> she taught at number 16 school, which was at Drake and Shields at that time. She taught there for nine years. And during this time, she had been going to school in the summer time. And she received her BA degree in elementary education. And then she got her master's in school administration at <coughs> Colorado State College, which is um, now UNC at Greeley. She started teaching in the Putter School Districts in 1953. And she taught uh, first grade at LaPorte Avenue. Then when she became principal at Dunn School, when Bennett School opened, she was, was principal of Dunn and Bennett. And then she became principal of the Mountain Schools. And she was, after that, she was elementary coordinator for five years and a reading coordinator for two years until her retirement in 1974. So she had 40 years yeah. of experience. Wow. Yes. Wow. <coughs> Were children different in your friend's teaching time from children now? Well, I wouldn't say that they were all that different. They did, they dressed differently. 
<laughs> yes, in clothing, they weren't allowed to wear shorts to school then. <laughs> and they weren't allowed to wear faded jeans that were tattered and holes in them. And uh, so it, it's, it's different than it was at that time now. Um, what are your memories of Fort Collins, and how has it changed since you've been here? Well, now for the Werners, Mr. Werner told me that when uh, he came here to school, Mountain Avenue and College Avenue were the only two streets that were paved. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> and so, it's, I can see such a big difference because I have been here 47 years, and Prospect Street was the mm -hmm. south end of town. Mm -hmm. How has girls' opportunity changed? Like how, or do they, back then, did they have less job opportunities, or how are, are they treated different now than they were then? Oh, there wasn't near the opportunities that they have now. The, uh, and even when I stopped teaching, we didn't have televisions in the schoolrooms. No less compare the computers <laughs> and all of that. We didn't have that at all. And you are so fortunate to have all of this. And there was nothing like running these cameras and all. So uh, there's been a lot of changes and you are so fortunate to be able to have this opportunity. Has teaching ways changed like the way teachers teach the kids about learning or, or the discipline the experiments, the experiments? Yes, uh, we didn't have as much uh, working together as many of the schools do now and we didn't have uh, Oh, the different uh, setups with uh, the way children are working together and all. It was more just straight teaching, you might say. They didn't have, have as many fun things to do. <laughs> uh, well, discipline? You yeah. ask about discipline. Mm -hmm. Well, we were able to discipline more than they do now. And uh, not that we got rough with them or anything, <laughs> but we could be more firm with them mm -hmm. than what they are allowed to now. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, then, um, do back then did they when you started teaching did you still have field trips and things like that oh yes yeah yeah yes. do you have any like field trips that you remember that was fun for you or? well mrs warner and i we would take the uh kindergarten and the first grade out to uh the morehouse farm on uh, overland trail they and uh, we'd see the, all the animals in the spring little baby animals and yeah. all. And, uh, oh, we've gone to the CSU dairy, and we've, we did a lot of field trips then. Went to the pumpkin patch. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then, um, uh, we want to thank you for coming and yes, sharing um, about the Warners, and um, for you coming also and being able to be here. We really appreciate it. Yeah, we really <laughs> appreciate it.